hidden away in secret back chambers all over Cormier are old paintings of this or that noble embracing a nude Princess Alucer as they both smile out at the viewer as if at ease in intimacy. Hail and well met and welcome back to another Realms Lore episode. I am here with the original creator of the Forgotten Realms himself, Sarah Ed Greenwood. And uh, since Tasha's Cauldron of Everything, patronage has been a pretty hot topic in the D&D &D and Forgotten Realms space. And we want to expand on that a little bit today. Ed, you want to give him a taste? Sure, yeah. So in this video, we're going to talk about not just, you know, patronizing somebody because you buy your bread or your meat from them, but the sort of people who can commission stuff, who have enough money to create stuff that they want to see so they get to start fads and fashions in the realms not just you know funny portraits of their dog and we would love if you would patronize us over at patreon.com slash ed greenwood and uh your support there is actually what facilitates us being able to make these videos for you here so uh in the interim though please enjoy this realms lore video patronage patreon i love it i'd like you to create this for me patronage in the realms. Patronage is an accepted part of society in the realms, and because entities or organizations need to have spare wealth in order to be patrons, in many places being a patron is a status symbol. Nobles are patrons if interested in such things, and wealthy status seekers or even wannabe nobles noisily become patrons so as to enrich their lives and gain a loftier social standing. In some places and times, this even becomes institutionalized. For instance, the Crown of Cormier expects nobles to have house heralds, meaning heralds who are paid members of the noble households. In earlier days, these heralds were often supplied by the royal court, and hence mistrusted by the nobles as spies for the crown. These days, a rare few still come from the royal court. In other places and times, the wealthy compete to outspend each other to commission creations that are splashier and gaudier and larger or more abundant than their rivals commission. The results can be visually spectacular, in the eyes of some, tasteless, and so become landmarks, or at least immediately recognizable to any visitor. In most places across the heartlands of Faroon and along the Sword Coast, the local nobility or self-styled nobility, uh, city lords, even if it's a self-bestowed title and their former pirates, adventurers, or lowly millers or dockers, will patronize artists, weavers, and sculptors whose work they like to make portraits, usually large and flattering, and of the patron, sometimes depicted embracing a partner they yearn to have in life, but cannot have in reality. Hidden away in secret back chambers all over Cormier are old paintings of this or that noble embracing a nude Princess Alucer as they both smile out at the viewer as if at ease in intimacy. Tapestries and sculptures, busts and staircase finials being the usual initial projects, followed by bronze statues for local market and mansion gates display. Less popular but still numerous patronages are supporting local cooks, bakers, vintners, and brewers. Though, if possible, the wealthy patron usually tries to hire the skilled artisan into staff positions. This is followed in popularity by minstrels who can compose. Jesters are usually royal court positions. Relatively few nobles or wealthy folk formerly patronized such performers, instead making a glib ability to entertain, amuse, and impress with juggling and acrobatics a plus when hiring scribes, envoys, errand runners, and other more practical household positions. Indeed, jesters in the realms have a certain unlucky or cursed reputation thanks to embellished and retellings folklore about past individuals who were undercover spies for rivals or were wizards, sorcerers, or warlocks hiding in plain sight in such roles to get free food and board. 
in places and times where their gift and chosen profession would make them hated, feared, shunned, exiled, or executed. Certain Netherese survivors experimenting with magical longevity that had not yet extended to lichdom, or who were stealthily gathering necessary material components for an attempted process to achieve lichdom, and these have been many and varied down the centuries, often took positions as jesters or court sages when such positions were dominated by colorful storytelling duties in the past, and the stories of their betrayals, intrigues, and even eventual conspiracies to seize local rule have come down to realms folk today in a collective manner that has conferred a cloak of suspicion and untrustworthiness to jesters. Dirty old man is a flattering Ferunian view of a jester. Sly lurking villain seeking the throne is the stereotype. Every buyer in the realms, if they can, will develop favored suppliers over time. Shops or artisans they trust to provide them with boots or belts or bowls or radishes, so they are in the broadest sense patrons. But I'm talking now about the narrower sense of patronage in which a buyer is commissioning unique or personalized products. Make me not just a dagger, but a left-handed dagger with that blued blade I saw that you made for Lord Bladderbat, and a gilded handle that looks like a rooster's head. These sort of patrons pay more, and their tastes influence what's made, and if seen by others and considered attractive and perhaps practical, not just odd or unusual, may even start fads or longer-lived fashions that drive change or even development. Examples of such fashions include the half-cloak, popular for centuries in Cormier that over time spread to Sembia, Waterdeep, Neverwinter, Baldur's Gate, Zazesfer, and beyond. A half-cloak is a pleated length of splendid for-show fabric, such as shimmer weave or even cloth of gold, which hangs down a wearer's back from a yoke or baldric, almost always of the same material as the hang, that passes under one armpit and over the opposite shoulder. They are impractical, purely for adornment. Fads are short-lived fashions. In the realms, these have recently included such things as side-table statuettes of sculpted dragons cradling eggs, designed to be candle lamps that channel their smoke up the dragon's neck and out of its snout, and tinkling chimes miniature water clocks, miniature meaning about the size of a human toddler. The chimes and the small size made them inaccurate at time-telling. Fads ripple outwards along the trade routes from where they first arise, and usually fade swiftly, but may be still spreading as many as three years after they've died at their sources. They may linger in some places due to differing local tastes, and usually leave behind knickknacks in curio shops everywhere they reach. Residents of Waterdeep today, if your realm's campaign is set within a year or so of 1500 DR, will be familiar with at least three lavishly spending patrons. The rival nobles Feldrin Arturnel and Artigas Thal, and the wealthier than both of those nobles put together wannabe noble are Haverhathon Manturavel, purchased three grand adjacent houses, and is deep in a decades long war with the palace to obtain permission to join them. He's gone ahead and tried thrice without the approval of the Mast Lords, and thrice has seen the Watchful Order arrive to magically dismantle the work and restore the structural separation, but he is nothing if not stubborn. Mantavarel is of increasing interest to adventurers as he hires them for shady, get-around laws missions, often after the palace fined him heavily and threatened him with imprisonment followed by exile for hiring too many mercenaries at once for the same purposes. His patronage is wide but shallow. He commissions everything from walking sticks to ever-changing, elaborate personal monograms, which are his preferred form of heraldry. And he's currently concentrating on elaborate showy tunics and doublets 
and short motif music and fanfares to accompany him as he promenades about the city. He's a slender, short, handsome, blonde man who always wears gold earrings and elaborate gold filigree and gem spectrals over his bare chest. Jewelry usually worn only by older, wealthy Waterdavian women or younger ones only upon height of formality occasions. Feldrin Artemel is the second son of his house and is a tall, thin man with daggerboard sideburns and smoldering green eyes who's very good with finances and serves House Artenel as a watchdog over their investments and those they do business with. Aware of his awkwardness with women and hence his lessened chances of attracting a suitable wife or even arm candy, whose company isn't paid for, for feasts and revels, he patronizes writers of flowery phrases who can arm him with glib words to use in flirtation and courtship. He's also the patron of dressmakers and tapestry weavers on behalf of House Artenel, who provide Artenel, noblewoman, and their ladies-in-waiting with a steady stream of glittering gowns and night cloaks, and has recently embarked upon a project to freshen the gloomy old portraits hanging in the Artenel city mansion with larger, grander, and brighter replacements. Artigas Thal is a bad old uncle of his house, what is popularly known as a wastrel uncle, and was responsible for a steady stream of minor scandals in his earlier years involving roistering, smashing windows and furniture in drunken brawls and pranks all over the city, and the conquering of the wives of other nobles. Later, as his vigor and delight in fleeing furious husbands declined, he took to gambling in clubs, lost a lot of foul money he shouldn't have been wagering, and was finally steered away from gambling to becoming a patron of crafters of the unusual all over the city. From staves and walking sticks with oversized carved heads of such things as tongue-out leering goblins and built-in lanterns to glass decanters made in molds and then polished that take the shape of two-headed dragons with the necks forming double handles to staircase finials that are nested balls, spheres inside spheres inside spheres, carved with windows allowing a passerby to see tiny carved scenes within them on the surface of deeper balls. Artigas is slowly redeeming himself in the eyes of his family for his staggering gambling losses by breeding fine horses for sale and slowly repaying what he cost House Artemel. These days, he uses hired adventurers for swift, single-mission, get-even strikes at those who swindle or mock him. So, patronages can take many forms and result in such varied things as a new supply of custom combs or toothpicks or a new fleet of elegant merchant ships or even warships. Some are flamboyant and public and boasted about and some are private and silent with arrangements made to try to keep them that way. Like alliances and illicit romantic affairs, they are everywhere in the realms. Some folk blunder through them, obliviously, on a daily basis. Hi, welcome back to Realm Speak. And this time around, we're doing this. And this is one that literally has lots of correct inter of pronunciations. Achero, Achero, Acheron, Acheron. So most people settle on that first one. All of them are correct. Acheron, Achero, whatever you want. Achero. Um, because guess what? The particular entity in question will hear no matter what you say. There's also a river of the same name. The two of them are related. Achero. 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 Be very careful. And today, it, nah, hold on. I want to say something to the degree of since Tasha's Cauldron of Everything came out, patronage has been a pretty popular topic in the realms. And today we're going to be taking an in depth look. Mm -hmm. Do you want to? Whatever. Okay. Sorry. I'm easy. <clears throat> One more time. It's patreon.com slash Ed Greenwood. And uh, why did you shake your head? Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. <laughs> 
I thought that was a cue, man. <laughs> oh, well, I was like, there's a really great time here for Patreon to Patreon, and if you, like, want to help support that, I don't Oh, Hi, honey. <laughs> okay, 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 okay. <laughs> here we go. Uh, <laughs> it's gonna be hell for the next editor that has to do this. Sh oh, just AKA a Lee, have another yeah. drink of well turkey. Yeah, yeah, fine. fun. <laughs> anyway, uh, yes, 